Hey everyone, it's Rob Ryder. Today, how about volunteer to be an American National? Because as it turns out, the American National Red Cross wants you. And so on Sunday, February 24th, 2019, we'll do a little investigation into what that could mean. And this isn't meant to be an answer. This is just meant to propose an idea. Hopefully some people that have Red Cross experience can fill in some blanks, but uh, nevertheless, um, it's pretty self-explanatory, so in the next week or so, I'll be asking my own questions. But this is based on what's in Title 36 United States Code, um, which is where the American Legion is located, right? It's a charter. It's a federally chartered corporation. Well, as it turns out, the American National Red Cross is a body corporate body politic in the District of Columbia. Uh, and its name of the corporation is the American National Red Cross. So a body corporate body politic, that's like a municipality, right? And the District of Columbia is the seat of government of the United States. So it's a body corporate body politic or a municipality in the United States. They would have in personam jurisdiction over their members. That could be really important and powerful to have, right? Because if you're in the one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, then, you know, there's just one set of laws and uh, one seat of government and so forth. And, you know, you're really not a member of these particular states because uh, there's nobody holding office. They haven't taken a proper oath to office. And uh, so, you know, this idea of the nationality and so forth, we have never been, like I was born here, right? So I have a certificate of live birth. When I look at it, it shows that um, the local registrar got the record 13 days after my birth. But the law says that the state registrar has to have it within five days after birth or after the event. Well, there's no way they could have had it if the local registrar didn't get it, right? So it was an invalid registration. There's been a defect since the beginning. And Rosita uh, was naturalized, and I can't remember exactly what it is on her document we're looking at, but well, she was pointing out to me again. But there's like one thing left to be done, which is to certify that she is a national. That hasn't been done yet. And so we've never actually been in the United States, and I've shown that in... Uh, my last couple of videos where I've shown this mail I've gotten because of filing for veterans benefits, where it's coming to me in a U.S. A United Postal Service flat, and inside is a first-class envelope from the Veterans Administration, three hundred dollars for penalty use for private for private use. It doesn't have a stamp on it. It's not been canceled. It is being used for private use. But that's how they're sending it. And when I look at the tracking on UPS, it shows it left Battle Creek, Michigan, United States, right? It's spelled out United States. But when it comes to me, it's Rockford, MI, right? Michigan, U.S. So, you know, UPS doesn't believe I'm in the United States. They say I'm in the U.S. I'm in, a, I'm in an acronym. I'm not in the de jure. I'm in the de facto. Well, I want to change that. I want to be in the United States because under, you know, in the United States, you'd be protected by the Constitution. Now, a lot of people, you know, their idea is to leave the United States. Well, if that's your idea. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about getting in the United States. And so I was going to try to use the American Legion because I'm a veteran. And I still probably will because one of their purposes is for the American Legion is to uphold and defend the Constitution. So I can show them all sorts of things that are wrong. But uh, looking at this one, well, this is a body corporate body politic in the District of Columbia. So it's like a municipality in the District of Columbia when District of Columbia is a state. And that's the seat of the national government. So the name of the corporation is the American National Red Cross. American National Red Cross. We may want to be members of this. And so that's what this is about. Well, how do you become a member? And what did the charter say? And well, we're going to read on. 
But before we do, uh, my email address is quarterrecord at AOL.com. Phone number 616-712-6179. And urgent, uh, could you please donate, pay it forward, if you could please. My PayPal account is robrider at AOL.com. Or by credit debit card, basically you send me an email saying how much you could donate, and I send you a money request through PayPal, and then you can use your credit card to make the payment. I'm trying to make it easy on you. You know, I've had people call me just this week, at least three different times. I've watched your videos for years, but none of them had ever donated. Well, how do you think this ship rolls, brother? Got to donate. Uh, you can send it in the mail to Robert Allen Retluski, 10955, 14 Mile Road Northeast, Rockford, Michigan, 49341-8664. I mean, really, do you think I'm going to run away with your donation? Have you looked at how many videos I've done, how long I've been at this? I'm not doing this to make money. I'm doing this so I can do this. And so I'm asking you to help. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of people that could donate $100, one-time deal. And if you can't, well, then you can't. But if you could, well, how about going to PayPal? Because I can't pay my rent. And the next time I can't pay my rent, which is in uh, four more days, well, I may get an eviction notice. Is that what you want to happen? I don't think so. I don't think, you know, that that's anybody's wish. And if it is your wish, well then, you know, I'm not going to let you have your wish. Because the others will donate. Thank you very much. Okay, so what's a body politic? Well, according to uh, Black's Law Dictionary, the term applied to a corporation, which is usually designated as a body, corporate, and politic. The term is particularly appropriate to a public corporation invested with powers, with powers, with powers, and duties of the government. It is often used in a rather loose way to designate the state or nation or sovereign power. I'll read that again. It is often used in a rather loose way to designate state or nation or sovereign power. Well, what do we call this thing? The American National Red Cross? Well, it sounds like a national power. Or the government of a county or municipality. Well, it isn't those, right? It's actually it's an instrumentality of the government. Without distinctly connotating any express or individual corporate character. Blah, 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 blah. It's just, you know, it's different than other corporations. It's the government. So if you're a member of the American National Red Cross, then you're a member of the government. And they actually have indemnification for their members. So let's get into this a bit. Give me a second to pull up some other sheets and we'll, we'll see what they had to tell us. Hang on. Okay, because it's good to be precise sometimes. We're talking about Public Law 105-225 of the 105th Congress. An act to revise, codify, and enact without substantial change certain general and permanent laws related to patriotic and national observances, ceremonies, and organizations. As Title 36, United States Code, patriotic and national observances, ceremonies, and organizations which you can download online, and uh, this one's kind of hard to read, and you can't highlight things, so I found where the American Red Cross, um, let me see, yeah, the charter, you know, they made up their own copy, use of the American National Red Cross in aid for the armed forces, mm-hmm. Related provisions of the United States Criminal Code. So the Congressional Charter of the American National Red Cross. Uh, the American National Red Cross, as we saw, is a federally chartered instrumentality of the United States in a body corporate and politic in the District of Columbia. The name of the corporation is the American National Red Cross, the corporation may conduct its business and affairs and otherwise hold itself out as American Red Cross. So American Red Cross is a trade name for the uh, legal name, the American National Red Cross. 
right? But American, American Red Cross in any jurisdiction. Its purpose is to provide volunteer aid in a time of war to sick and wounded of the armed forces in accordance with the spirit and conditions of. Can you imagine that? That's his number one purpose, to provide aid to the sick and wounded of the armed forces. Ah, treaties of the Red Cross, treaties of Geneva, da 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 all sorts of things to act in accordance with the military authorities as a medium of communication between the people of the United States, that would be us, and the armed forces of the United States, that would be the military. They're our go-between. And we can go to them then and say, hey, the civil government isn't enforced in the laws. In fact, they're not the civil government. They're insurgents. And have the, right, have the Red Cross act as a mediator. And to act in those matters between similar national societies, the people, and the armed forces of the United States. Right? So they act as a go-between, between the people of the United States and the armed forces. So you could go to the armed forces and say, well, um, you know, the civil government's not upholding the Constitution. Let's find out what else there is. To carry out a system of national and international relief in a time of peace and apply that system in mitigating the suffering caused by pestilence, famine, fire, floods, and other great national calamities, and to devise and carry out measures for preventing those calamities. You know, we see them doing that all the time. Membership and charters. Membership. Membership in the corporation is open to all the people of the United States and its territories and possessions on payment of an amount specified or as otherwise provided in the bylaws. So anybody can be a member of the Red Cross, either by giving them some money or doing something else, and what those things are are in the bylaws. But this isn't the bylaws, this is the charter. And we'll get to the bylaws. Uh, chapters. The chapters of the corporation are local units of the corporation. Granting charters to the chapters, uh, that's what the corporation does. Defines the territorial jurisdiction of the chapters, yada, 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 yada. So you get the, you know, the overall board, the local board, or chapters, and they have uh, their own territorial jurisdiction, but they're not separate units of the corporate, um, from the corporation. They're local units of the corporation. Excuse me. They're not separate uh, legal entities. They're just local units of the corporation. It's got a board of governors. The governor shall be appointed and elected in the following manner. The chairman shall be recommended to the president. An individual to serve as chairman of the board of governors. Apparently, they get up, he gets appointed by the president. Other members of the board of governors. Other than the chairman shall be elected at the annual meeting of the corporation in accordance with procedures as may be provided in the bylaws. There you go. It's another voluntary association that has its own, you know, delegates and election system and so forth. This is a, but this voluntary association is a body corporate, body politic. That's powerful. It's got advisory councils to the board of governors. Uh, Appointment by the president. The advisory council shall be composed of no fewer eight and no more than ten members, each of whom shall be appointed by the president from principal officers of the executive departments and senior officers of the armed forces whose positions and interests qualify them to contribute to carrying out the programs and purposes of the corporation. Well, that will be some good people to talk to. Right, the advisory <laughs> council, members from the armed forces, at least one, but not more than three of the members of the advisory council shall be selected from the armed forces. Okay, emergency bylaws, any bylaws adopted pursuant to some paragraph may provide special procedure necessary for managing the corporation during the emergency. Well, we're in emergency right now, if that's what they're talking about. Does, em does emergency include a national emergency declared by the president? I would say yes. 
Uh, okay, powers. The corporation may adopt policies and regulations, adopt and alter and destroy a seal, own and dispose of property to carry out purposes of the corporation, accept gifts, devises, bequeaths of property to carry out purposes of the corporation, sue and be sued in courts of law and equity, state or federal, within the jurisdiction of the United States and do any other act necessary to carry out this chapter and promote the purposes of the corporation. It's all sounded good so far. Designation, the corporation is designated as the organization which is authorized to act in manners of relief under the treaties of Geneva. Well, that means it's the one that can enforce the international law. Wow. Hey, this is good. Emblem's badge and brassard. Uh, emblem and badge and carrying out purpose under the chapter of the corporation may have and use as an emblem and badge a Greek red cross on a white ground. Well, that would be a Christian cross, right? Because it's just Greek Orthodox, but it's still a cross. Uh, as, you know, as compared to the Latin cross, which is more like a T. As described in the treaties of Geneva, da, 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 delivery of the brassard. In accordance with those treaties, the delivery of the brassard allowed for individuals neutralized in time of war shall be left to the military authority. And so this is a brassard is something you wear on your shoulder, like the Red Cross patch. So if you were to put that on and go into court because you had a court case, I believe they would immediately say case dismissed. We'll see why as we go on here, right? But this is, uh, you've been neutralized. And we're going, whatever kind of courts we're going to, they're not courts of the Constitution, right? They're not, none of these people have a proper oath of office. So one of the places you can serve under an assumed name is the military. And so if they were acting like they're military tribunals, um, well, then, you know, the American Red Cross is their ally. It's not their enemy, right? It shows you're not the enemy. You're, you're, you're neutral, <coughs> which is different than when we go in now, right? They treat you like you're uh, already guilty. And is that because uh, the selective service system gave everybody the classification of 1H instead of 1A? whether you served in the military or not, everybody got the same classification, 1H. Now, they didn't do it the way the law says to do it, but they did it anyways. I showed that in my last video. So we're trying to, you know, establish ourselves in a system that doesn't see us yet. But if we could, well, then we would be in the United States, and Nancy Pelosi and gang wouldn't be in would not be in the United States, and they're not now in the United States. They're in the United States of America. They're the Congress of the United States of America, not the Congress of the United States. Uh, ownership. The United States government shall retain ownership of the corporation's permanent headquarters comprised of buildings erected on Square 172 in the District of Columbia. And uh, the permanent building erected in the use of the corporation in connection with work and corporate. Da, 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 da. Okay, we'll look at something here yet. So let's look at the brassard real, just real quick. That's the arm. Uh, it's an armband or a piece of cloth or other material worn on the upper arm. The term typically refers to an item of uniform worn as part of a military uniform or by police or other uniformed persons. Unit, roll, or rank badges or other insignia are carried on it instead of being stitched to the actual clothing. The brassard, when spread out, may be roughly rectangular in shape. Where it is worn merely around the arm, it may also be roughly triangular shape, in which case the brassard is also attached to the shoulder strap. The term is originally French deriving from uh, bras, meaning arm. Brassard are also used with the uniforms of organizations which are not military, but which are influenced by and styled upon the military. 
such as police, emergency services, volunteer services, militaristic societies, and political parties. Well, I'd say that's the Red Cross, emergency services, volunteer services. The Abrasard is often used to temporarily attach insignia such as rank to clothing not normally bearing insignia or to temporarily attach insignia to uniform of limited time such as insignia for officer of the day or duty officer or for uniforms expected to have a high turnover of either wearer or insignia born such as those of cadets and other youth organizations. Brassards worn by military police and Red Cross personnel fall under this category. Okay, so you're putting your brassard on as a Red Cross is the same as the military police putting theirs on. Somebody's going to pay attention because the Red Cross is a body corporate, body politic in the District of Columbia. And if you're wearing one of its brassards, then you're its member, as long as you didn't do it uh, fraudulently. And then the headquarters building of the American Red Cross is located at 430 17th Street Northwest in Washington, D.C. Right, That's the building they were talking about that is on this uh, particular square. Right, That square is... 430 17th Street Northwest in Washington, D.C. Okay, let's continue on here. Endowment Fund, Annual Report, Authority of the Comptroller General of the United States. The Comptroller General of the United States is authorized to review the corporation's involvement in any federal program or activity that government carries out under law. Right? That the government carries out under law. That they're the saying they're the government. The Comptroller General of the United States is authorized to review the books because they're the books of the government of the United States. Office of the Ombudsman, the corporation shall establish an office of the Ombudsman with such duties and responsibilities as may be provided by the bylaws or a resolution. And... Uh, well, there you are. Reservation of rights to amend or repeal. Congress reserves the right to amend or repeal the provisions of this chapter. But apparently they haven't. And then uh, related provisions of the United States Criminal Code. Whoever wears or displays the sign of the Red Cross, the Broussard, or any insignia colored in imitation thereof for the fraudulent purpose of inducing the belief that he or she is a member of or an agent for the American National Red Cross. Okay, well, if you were a member, then you wouldn't be wouldn't be fraudulent. You'd just be showing them that you are. In other words, you can make your own up as long as you're a member. So if the military hasn't handed one out yet, well, make your own. Uh, whoever, whether a corporation, association, person, other than the American National uh, Red Cross and its duly authorized employees and agents, the sanitary hospital authorities of the Armed Force of the United States use the emblem of the Greek Red Cross on white ground or any sign or insignia made or colored in imitation thereof or of the words Red Cross or Geneva Cross or any combination of these words shall be fined not more than $250 or in prison not more than six months or both. So if you were then in the court, either they're going to have to say you committed a crime or they're going to have to agree you're on the Red Cross which is a body corporate, body politic in the United States. And the court that you're in isn't in the United States because those people didn't take a proper oath to office. They did take an oath to office, but because it's not the proper oath to office, then they voluntarily gave up their nationality. I'll show you in just a second. Uh, the uh, this, this section shall not make unlawful the use of such emblem, sign, insignia, or words which were, was lawful on the date of enactment of this title. Uh, that's 18 U.S.C. 706. 
Okay, uh, use the American Red Cross and aid armed forces. Whenever the president finds necessary, he shall accept cooperation assistance with the American National Red Cross and employ it under the armed forces under regulations to prescribe by the Secretary of Defense. There should be like people that are conscientious objectors, necessarily. Right? They don't want to fight, pick up a gun, but they're going to help out in the effort. And so, well, you're going to work for the Red Cross. Now, regardless, it puts you in the armed forces, right? You're not, you know, you're in the medical corps of the militia. So it's good to be a member. Personnel of the American National Red Cross who are performing duties in connection with cooperation assistance on the subsection may be furnished with transportation, meals and quarters, office space, yada, yada, yada. I don't have time to read quite to the level of detail that some of the stuff goes, but what are we going to do? Okay, well, they said uh, we'd find membership and stuff in the bylaws. So here's the bylaws. Amended and restated bylaws of the American National Red Cross. Excuse me, you can Google that, and you'll be looking at the same document I am. Amended and restated bylaws of American National Red Cross. These amended restated bylaws, American National Red Cross Corporation, have been adopted as the bylaws of the American National Red Cross by the Board of Governors, pursuant to authority conferred by the Board of Governors, by an act of Congress approved on 5 January, or January 5, 1905, as amended, appearing at 36 U.S.C., subsection 300101, Congressional Charter. Certain defined terms. Uh, the chairman means the person appointed by the President of the United States to serve as the chairman. The chapter means local unit of the corporation. Has authorized to provide certain services and or engage in certain activities in a particular territorial jurisdiction according to Section 8.2. So that's why I think, you know, we become members of a chapter. By being a member of a chapter, you're a member of the overall uh, association. Congressional Charter, well, we've read that. Corporate policy and regulations means the charter, the bylaws, all actions, policies, procedures, resolutions, the board, and other written directives, policies, regulations, the chief executive officer or his designee. Each source of corporate authority occupies order of precedence in which it appears in the preceding sentence. So the higher up the list, the more authority they have. Emergency means an attack on the United States of America or on a locality in which the corporation conducts its business or customarily holds meetings of the board, any nuclear or atomic disaster, any catastrophe, any presidential declared emergency or other event, occurrence, or condition as a result which quorum of the board pursuant to section 2.6 is not present at the first board meeting called in the manner provided under 12.4. Ooh. Hey, we're in an emergency. Okay, board of governors, they got powers. You know, we should be reading all of this stuff at some point, but that's after you remember. So, da 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 officers, except provided, the office of the corporation shall be, got chairman, chief executive, president, chief financial, general counsel, chief audit executive, ombudsman, one or more vice chairman, one or more vice presidents, on and on and on. Okay, them all are all the officers, well, that isn't us. Powers, authority, responsibility. The officer of the corporation shall have such powers, authority, responsibilities, and management of the corporation as shall be provided in the congressional charter, which means they can sue and be sued in courts of law and equity, state or federal, in the United States. Ombudsman? Yeah. Let's see. Shall have and perform such... 
shall have and perform such powers, authority, and responsibility as are incident to the position of an internal corporate ombudsman, which shall be to serve as a neutral and impartial dispute resolution practitioner, whose principal function shall be to provide confidential and informal assistance to the many constituents with concerns or complaints about the corporation. All right? It's supposed to be your advocate. Annual meetings. Membership. The corporation is a membership organization. The purpose of membership in the corporation is to promote community understanding, commitment, and support for the mission, strategic plan, and services of the corporation and its chapters. Membership is open to all people of the United States and its territories and its possessions. Any individual shall, 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 shall be a member of the corporation if he or she makes a monetary contribution to the corporation, including a chapter, B, performs voluntary services for the corporation, including volunteer services performed directly for a chapter, or C, donates blood to the corporation. Membership shall continue for each year in which the similarly renewed in which it is similarly renewed unless sooner terminated. So you can give money, you can give time, or you can give blood and be a member. For all purposes, including without limitation for purposes of these bylaws, which as we see includes indemnification, membership in the corporation shall mean that a person has been conferred Pursuant to Section 7.1 of these bylaws, the right to receive notices of meetings of members of the chapter providing services in the territorial jurisdiction in which such persons reside and the right to vote only at those meetings of members of the chapters. All right, so if you're a member, you should be getting mail. That mail should have something to do with... Uh, Notices of meetings of members and your right to vote for uh, at those meetings. All right, for members of the governing board of the chapter, delegates for such chapter, members of the corporation and membership in the corporation shall not confer upon or otherwise entitle any person any rights or privileges other than those that are described in the preceding sentence including the right to vote or other matter involving or concerning the corporation. Okay. <clears throat> so it's easy enough to tell if you're a member. You should be getting mail telling you to, you know, you have a right to vote. Uh, when the annual meeting is going to be. Things of that nature. So if you're a member of the Red Cross and you're getting these things, hey, could you send me a copy? All right, so I can take a look because I don't have one to look at. Uh, right, you can send it to court of record at AOL.com. C O U R T O F R E C O R D at AOL.com. I try to keep these two separated, right? PayPal, please. I hope a lot of people use PayPal, right? And for the reason it's there, Rob Ryder at AOL.com, right? But uh, if you want to send me something to do with the videos, please send it to court of record at AOL.com. I don't have time to go read all the comments online and so forth and well it just would be you know i just never have done it i don't think i ever will uh nature of chapters chapters are local units of corporation shall not be construed as legal entities separate from the corporation right the chapter is the american national red cross chapter governance a chapter the charter of a chapter is the recognition by the corporation that the chapter is a local unit of the corporation with specified territorial jurisdiction, right? So whoever says they're the chapter, you say, well, show me your authorization from the, you know, from the American Red Cross that the corporation has recognized you. Okay. Funds of the corporation. Identification. Here we go. Section 10, identification, provided 
that the provisions of Section 10.1 uh, and Section 10.2 are satisfied as determined by the corporation, the corporation shall indemnify any person, each such person as indemnity, named or threatened to be named a party to a proceeding by reason of the fact that such person is or was. Right? So they're going to indemnify you by reason of the fact from any, uh, because you're going to be a member of these things, right? So um, from any suit. Identify any person named or threatened to be named a party to any proceeding by reason of the fact that such person is or was. And we have all these choices. A member of the board. The Board of Trustees of the Endowment Fund, the Benefit Plan Administration Committee, the Benefit Plan, Plan Investment Committee, the governing body of any chapter, the American Red Cross Retirement System, the American Red Cross Health and Life Benefits Plan, the American Red Cross Savings Plan, or any other employee benefit plan or trust established, maintained, or administered by the corporation or an officer, employee, member of a board, appointed, advisory council, or agent, including a volunteer of the corporation, any chapter, any subsidiary of the corporation, or any of the foregoing. Well, we just saw that being a volunteer made you a member, so if you're going to include volunteer, that's like saying including a member. So if you're a member of the corporation... You're indemnified. You're indemnified from uh, being made a party to a proceeding. Now, like in a foreclosure, they won't use your full legal name, right? They'd use like Robert A. Ritluski, maybe. And then they'd put, uh, you know, whatever it means for all other variations. They got that little blah, blah they put at the end of it, right? At skew or at E-T-S-E-Q or something like that. Uh, you know, so that includes you. You could be made a, a party. Any right of an indemnity to indemnification shall be a contract right. Shall be a contract. Shall be a contract right. It's a right by contract. And shall include the right to receive, prior to the conclusion of any proceeding, payment, of any expenses occurred by the indemnity in connection with such proceeding, consistent with the provisions of applicable law and other provisions of sex, this section, any person covered under this section 10 shall be indemnified in full against all liabilities incurred in a proceeding. For purposes of section 10, proceeding means any threatened, pending, or completed action suit or proceeding, whether civil, criminal, administrative, or investigative, including any legislative investigation or inquiries, and whether formal or informal, liabilities means and includes the obligation to pay a judgment, settlement, penalty, fine, including any excise tax assessed with respect to an employee benefit plan or reasonable expenses actually incurred with respect to a proceeding, including reasonable attorney fees. And party means and includes an individual who was, is, or is threatened to be made a named defendant or respondent in a proceeding. So if they're using any version of your name, well, they're talking about you. If you're a member of the, uh, you know, that you may be a, uh, made a defendant. Well then, you're identified if you're a member of the Red Cross. So what do you need to do? And this says completed. I mean, you know, that makes it sound like, well, even if it's already done, send it to them. See what they have to say. Become a member and send it to them. So certain conditions and limitations. Any person seeking identification shall notify the Office of General Counsel in writing as soon as practical after each person becomes aware that such person is threatened to be made involved in any manner, including but not limited to as a party or witness in a proceeding. 
but not in, but in any event, no later than 15 days after the date such person has been notified through service of process or otherwise that such person is involved in any matter, including but not limited to, as a party or witness in a proceeding or submit a request for and submit a request for identification, which request shall include documentation and information as is reasonably available, like whatever you got in the mail, the indemnities agreement to representation, defense and settlement in such proceeding by counsel selected and approved by the Office of General Counsel, and the indemnities acknowledgement and agreement that all entitlement and identification shall be determined exclusively by the provision of Section 10. As soon as practicable after receiving the indemnities request, the general counsel or his or her designee shall make a determination on the indemnity's entitlement to indemnification, including whether the indemnity met the standard of conduct set forth in 10-2. We get to 10-2 yet? No. Yes. Oh, here we go. Corporation shall not indemnify an indemnity against liability occurred in a proceeding unless it is determined that the indemnity conducted himself or herself in good faith, reasonably, reasonably believed that his or her conduct was in the best interest of the corporation, except that the indemnity conduct with respect to an employee benefit plan should have been for the purpose of indemnity reasonably believed to be in the interest of the participation of benefits. Whew, well, I don't know if we need that one. In case of any criminal proceeding, had no reasonable cause to believe his or her conduct was unlawful such as they didn't swear out a complaint, did not conduct himself or herself with malice, dishonesty, or recklessness. Oh, this is going to hurt them bankers. So I'm saying, right, that if you remember, I'm saying that this is what they're saying, is that if you remember of the American Red Cross, then you have the ability to be indemnified under the bylaws. Right? Now, how exactly that's done, I don't know. I'm going to have to contact, uh, well, who is it you got to contact? The Office of General Counsel. Because they want you to submit this, you know, this one, two, three. So, hey, what's the form you want me to fill out? Right? What do you have for me to fill out to send back to you? But if you were getting foreclosed on, right, and the mail comes, and it doesn't have your name on it, but they're going to take your property, you'd send it to him and say, hey, it looks like they're trying to make me a party to something that isn't having any, anything to do with me because they're not using my full legal name. That paperwork never has your full legal name on it. It's got your name backwards, got a middle initial, got an addition like Robert A. Rutluski, comma, a single man. Or it's Rutluski, comma, Robert, or Rutluski, comma, Robert A, or some other bullshit. You know, your name doesn't have a comma in it, even if they put your last name first. It, my name doesn't have a comma. You can't put a comma in my name. Right? So when they're doing that, they're really not speaking to you, but they're going to make you responsible for that thing. That's the way the game is played. And they can do that because we're not in the United States. Right? And neither are they. We're all in the, in the United States of America. And so why I say that was, I showed this in my last video also. This is from the Congressional Record from January 17, 2019, which shows that the House is going to file their oaths of office required by the 6th Article of the Constitution of the United States. And as provided by subsection 2, some of that, to be administered by members dot, the text of which is carried in 5 U.S.C. 3331. And then they go on to give this oath, right? That goes on, and it says, so help me God. Well, then, because it says, so help me God, this doesn't satisfy the sixth article of the Constitution, because the sixth article says that any oath of office can't, have a religious test. And it does. And so the oath of office that satisfies the sixth article of the Constitution 
is found in the statutes at large in 1 STAT, first statute, right, first Congress, 1 STAT 23. It's the very first law passed after the ratification of the Constitution. I showed it in my last video. So these people didn't take an oath of office to the United States. And uh, beyond that, they did it after an adjournment, right? They had adjourned for the day, and they're acting like they're putting these into the official record. Well, you can't do it. You just said you adjourned. So this is a falsification. Well, in uh, Title VIII, Aliens and Nationality, it says in uh, Section 14, uh, 1481, loss of nationality by native-born or nationalized citizens, voluntary action, burden of proof, presumptions. And which it says, taking an oath or making an affirmation or other formal declaration of allegiance to a foreign state or political subdivision thereof after having attained the age of 18 years of age. Well, They must be looking at a different constitution than the one I'm looking at because they say that this conforms to the sixth article of the Constitution of the United States. Which so help me God. And I'm saying, well, that can't be. Because you can't have a religious test. And it also says IAB, right? I state your name, put your name in. Well, when they do this, they're using a middle initial name. And so we'll look at all these people who, this was their A.B. Uh, Robert B. Aldernot, Alderhalt, Gary J. Palmer, right? Middle initial, middle initial, uh, Debbie instead of Deborah. No middle names, da-da-da-da-da. None of these are these people's full legal name. Or if they are, well, they're going to have to prove it. Let's go look at their, look at their driver's license. That has their full legal name on it. So they didn't, you know, they didn't um, satisfy the sixth article of the Constitution, but they did take an oath and they used a middle initial name and then they swore to God that's who they were. So, you know, in the common law, which is the Ten Commandments between in this Judeo-Christian system we live in, right? They've taken God's name in vain. Because they are not I, Robert A. Rutluski. It's I, Robert Allen Rutluski. You only have one identification. Right? There's only one I. It's not a we. It's an I. Who is I? I isn't Robert A. Rutluski. I is Robert Allen Rutluski. I am Robert Allen Rutluski. And they didn't use theirs, so... Well, as far as I'm concerned, they lost their nationality. <clears throat> now, we get our nationality because we've never had one, but we would claim our nationality by becoming a member of the Red Cross. Right? So become a member of the Red Cross. Like, if you gave blood in this last year to the Red Cross, you're probably already in. If you had a court date, <laughs> go put the frickin' Brossard on your arm and, uh, you know, tell them I, you're a member of the Red Cross. Why have they called you to court? And see what the judge says. I bet you he lets you leave. Right? He's not going to, you know, he's military tribunal. Oh, you're the Red Cross. You can leave. Who brought you here? Right? Whoever brought you here may go to jail because they brought you here, but you're the Red Cross. You can leave. I think that's what would happen. Right, that we will change our status and be in this entity that is a body corporate and body politic in the District of Columbia. That's all I wanted to show you. What about the District of Columbia? Right, well, around the District of Columbia, they have these boundary markers. Right, and uh, Rosita pointed this out to me. The side of the boundary marker that faced the federal territory was inscribed jurisdiction of the United States. And with the distance in miles and poles of the previous cornerstone, the opposite side was marked with the name of the border state, Virginia or Maryland. Right? So if you're 
see these stones and you're in the United States, which is where the Red Cross is, well, then you're in the jurisdiction of the United States. And in that jurisdiction, in a particular building, by, you know, basically lot and block, 172, whatever it was, lot 172, block 172, square 172, you know, you're tied to the ground in the United States as a body, corporate body, politic, um, member of a patriotic association that's been given the duty to enforce the international law as far as uh, the laws of war are concerned. Right? The treaties and so forth. So that's really all I had for today. Right? I just wanted to share that with you. and Maybe somebody that has Red Cross experience can tell me more. But until then, if you can please donate, i got to ask again because you know, I'm kind of nervous about four days from now. So I'm going to pray you all help me out. Thank you very much. And we'll talk again soon. See ya.